As you can see, Photoshop's two companion programs, Bridge and Camera Raw, are both very full-featured programs in their own right, and in conjunction with Photoshop really give you a lot of options for working with your images. Now I think we're ready to move on to Photoshop itself. So let's open up this RAW file uh, from Bridge by double-clicking on it. It will bring us into Camera Raw and let's assume I've already made the adjustments that I need to make to this file to have it ready to work on in Photoshop. So now I'm just going to say Open Image and it will open it here in Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop let's take a look at the Photoshop workspace. It's the third workspace now that we need to become familiar with. Again across the top we have the menu bar and each of those menus contains various uh, operations that you can perform in Photoshop. The file menu again deals with ways that you can work with the image file. The edit menu uh, has various edit functions for the image file. The image menu deals with uh, various modes and adjustments for the image. The layer menu is for when you're working with layers in Photoshop and we'll get to that in a future tutorial. The select menu is for working with selections. The filter menu gives you access to Photoshop's many image filters such as blur filters, distort filters, noise filters, sharpening filters, all kinds of stuff. The view menu <coughs> shows all the various uh, ways that you can view the image or the workspace. The windows menu is kind of like the uh, the panels in Bridge. It shows all of the various palettes that you can have open in your workspace in Photoshop. And the help menu again gives you help and updates for Photoshop itself. Below the menu bar is the tool option bar and below that is the toolbox. When you select a tool from the toolbox the options for that tool will show in the tool option bar right here. At the bottom of the page we have the status bar. The status bar shows you uh, what percentage you're zoomed into that image currently it also shows a variety of statistics about the image. Right now we're showing the size of the image which is 72.8 megabytes. You can also show the document profile, document dimensions, um, and various other bits of information about that particular image. I usually leave it set to document size because as I work on that image I can watch the document size grow here in the, uh, the second figure. Other locations around the workspace are taken up by what are called palettes. Okay? And right now I have various palettes open over here on the right side of my workspace. All of the palettes available are viewed here in the Windows menu and so you can turn palettes on and off by clicking them here and also some of them have direct key shortcuts available through the keyboard. You can open and close your palettes using the expand palettes arrows here. So if I want to see this row of palettes in expanded form, I can click on that and there are those palettes expanded. I can also expand these palettes and take a look at those. My workspace is currently organized uh, in a custom workspace that I built, just like you can build a custom workspace in Bridge. There is also an Essentials workspace, which looks pretty much the same as my custom workspace. There's a design workspace which brings up uh, palettes that are specific for people that do graphic design. 
You can also look at uh, a photography workspace, which opens up certain palettes that might be specific to photographers. And this is, again, fairly close to my workspace and the Essentials workspace. Uh, you can create your own workspace here. Uh, and that is done the same way it is in Bridge by changing the size of any of the windows to make it custom to what you want or clicking and dragging and moving any of the various palettes, the toolbox, or any other part of the workspace to different locations. And once you've customized your workspace, you can then say, create a new workspace, give it a name, and save it so that you can always get back to that workspace. And you can save as many workspaces as you like. Most of the palettes we will work with uh, in future tutorials, uh, but a couple of the palettes that I want to point out right now are the Navigator palette. The Navigator palette gives you a way to zoom in and out of the image, both with a, a slider and also by zooming out or zooming in in increments. And when you're zoomed in, instead of using the hand tool, which you can use, like you did in Camera Raw, you can also move the actual box around in the navigator to navigate to different parts of the image. The histogram panel shows that same histogram showing the tonal values for the image. That's another handy palette to have access to. So there's a quick overview of the different um, views and workspaces and tools and menus in Photoshop.